Hello, listeners. This is Kat, and welcome back to Put Your Hands Up Pod Fix. This will be the continuation of I Gave the Voices in My Head a Megaphone. This will be part two, the second half to this fic. Midnight strolls into class next, smiling and reminding the students about their presentations. Many groan, a couple cheer, and Izuku actually seems excited to speak in public. Hitoshi relaxes a little at seeing the goal of the brainwashing come to fruition. The art history teacher grins and connects the projector. Ida volunteers to go first, robotically going through armor motifs and different art pieces. Aoyama riveted and sparkling. A few others present their reports on different paintings or propaganda pieces. Izuku then offers to go next, leading Hitoshi to realize the 15th mistake he's made in this effort to be a good friend. Izuku, without the fear of public speaking, is magnetic. He practically prowls to the front of the class. He clicks through his presentation, yes, on an All Might series of artwork, with passion and not a stutter in sight. Midnight is against a wall, hands clasped in front of her and squealing in delight. She's almost sparkling, as her most anxious student commands the room with nothing but his words. Izuku musses his hair, when clicking to the next slide, head tilted to highlight his jaw. Hitoshi isn't the only one who has to gulp or take a deep breath. Uraraka is bright pink, Jiro is pointedly staring at her desk, and Aoyama's biting his lip. Todoroki stares, open-mouthed. The confidence Izuku holds when he gestures with his hand and grins in delight at the entranced class is almost overwhelming. He can practically see Ojiro and Sero questioning everything they knew about themselves and their love lives. Hitoshi is too mentally exhausted for this collective level of gay panic, but there's no escaping. Not when Izuku beams and asks, Any questions? And absentmindedly licks his lips. Great job, Midoriya. Midnight praises after several seconds of the class rebooting. It's like a whole new you. Channel this confidence for your PR lessons, cutie. Izuku laughs sheepishly and nods. He sits down and the rest of the class continues with at least one person always staring at Izuku, who is enraptured in all the following presentations. More than one classmate gets flustered beneath his intense stare. When everyone finishes, Midnight offers both compliments and criticisms just in time for the lunch bell to ring. I'm starving. Izuku groans, popping out of his seat and heading towards his friends. He enthusiastically leads them to the cafeteria. Everyone follows in morbid curiosity, half still under Izuku's spell. Kirishima has enough wherewithal to notice Bakugo stomping away as the rest of his friend group follows the entire class to a single, long table. Kirishima glances between the energetic teens before sighing and following his blonde friend. Hitoshi wonders if Kirishima knows he's too good for this world. The Deku squad claims the closest seats to Izuku, but the rest pile in wherever they can. Todoroki practically teleports to Izuku's right side. Tokiyami sits next to Hitoshi and picks at his apple slices, feathers somewhat ruffled. Hitoshi bro nods at Dark Shadow, who peeks out from behind the boy's back. I liked your presentation, Mito, Ashido compliments. It was very well done, Ida adds. His cheeks are still lightly dusted pink. They darken when Izuku smiles and thanks him. They chat about the presentations for several minutes while everyone grabs food and starts eating. Speaking of fashion choices, Ashido says when they talk about the wilder costumes during the start of the quirk era that Yayorozu presented on. Mito, do you think you'll be keeping this look? Hmm? Izuka responds, mouth full of rice. The whole open-collar sexy vibe you have. Sexy? He asks, eyebrows raised. Ashido nods enthusiastically. Yeah, I'm digging the style. It does look good, Ojiro mumbles at the end of the table. Izuku hums, poking his meal with his chopsticks. I might. I don't like how my ties usually turn out, but I don't want to cause any issues about the dress code. Ida glances away, still remembering the confrontation from the morning, and embarrassed. It's definitely better than your attempts at tying, Kaminari teases. I'll do your tie for you, Todoroki leans in. He's watching Izuku intently. Any day, just ask. Ooh, very smooth, Dark Shadow notes. Hitoshi glances at the sentient quirk and then to Tokiyami, who is face palming. When did Todoroki have game? Jiro asks Kaminari. The electric boy is grinning and whispers to her, both of them giggling. Well, well, if it isn't the losers of Class 1A. An obnoxious voice interrupts before they could hear Izuku's response. Ugh, not him, Hagakure groans. Monoma only sneers back. Uraraka scrutinizes the new arrival. Actually, I'm kind of curious about what will happen. She trails off. Hello, Monomakun, Ida greets stiffly, 
The smirk on Monoma's face reminds Satoshi just why he's glad he was put in 1A. Not that the students of 1B weren't all right. He was actually pretty cool with most of them. He, Kuroro, and Sen have a group chat for dark humor and memes. Everyone was competitive, but ultimately laid back. Yes, 1A also has an egotistical blonde who needs to always prove he's the best, but at least there's Izuku. Speaking of, his green-haired friend is side-eyeing Monoma as he prattles on about their upcoming joint training and how 1B will obviously do better against Ketsubetsu than your dysfunctional class. Izuku huffs and points at the blonde with his chopsticks. Monoma-kun, you have such a versatile quirk and enough charisma to really be a top hero. Of course I do, I... Too bad your inferiority complex is shoved so far up your ass you'll never walk out of our class's shadow. Monoma pales. Uraraka presses her hands to her mouth to muffle her snickers while Ida gapes. Asui turns her face away, shoulders subtly shaking and leaning against Uraraka. Hitoshi can't help the low whistle he gives while Todoroki makes hard eyes at their friend. Marry me, he mumbles. It's half aware at best. Todoroki hasn't looked away, and Hitoshi is hard-pressed to believe anything less than a nuclear explosion will distract him. Only a few people had heard Todoroki's quiet outburst, Izuku included. The smile that spreads across Izuku's face is new. It's not the bright and happy grin that warms their hearts. It's not the determined, sometimes nervous grin from training or facing down villains. It's not even the playful or teasing smirk he's been showing off throughout the day. It starts low, syrupy and sweet. There's a hint of warmth high on Izuku's cheeks and a sparkle in his eye. There's no typical flustered blush, just an edge of pink against his freckles, an inviting curl on his lips. Todoroki's breath literally hitches. Hitoshi's chest is uncomfortably tight. He resists the urge to rub his collarbone. Must be cholesterol or something. It's not like he wants Izuku to smile like that at him. That's weird for friends. He's not the world's foremost expert on friendship, but he's pretty sure about that. Wait a second. Monoma tries to interrupt before Izuku could respond. More than one person has to tear their eyes away from that smile. Izuku glances over at the other boy and clicks his tongue. Not now, Monoma-kun. The adults are talking. Kendo walks up once she spots the frozen Monoma standing in front of their table and gaping unattractively. The rest of the table is too busy laughing to hear her approach, but they quiet when they see the kind girl. She grimaces an apology and grabs the back of the blonde boy's collar, shaking him like an errant puppy. Sorry about him. Is he bothering you? Hi, Kendo-chan. The class president blinks at Izuku's warm greeting. No need to apologize for him. You've done nothing wrong. Besides, none of us here actually care about his opinion on our class. It does get repetitive, Jiro says from the end of the table, chin on hand. I've stopped paying attention, Shoji nods next to her, the mouth formed on his arm grinning. Like a chihuahua, barking at wolves, Hitoshi draws. Izuka turns and smiles at him, amused. Victory. All right. Kendo looks between the frazzled Monoma and the entire table of giggling hero students. Hitoshi can understand her confusion. Usually, the class reacts with exasperation or attempts at violence in certain explosive cases. She decides to just shake her head and drag her classmate off as usual. Monoma comes back to himself as they start to move, spluttering something incomprehensible, but no one pays attention. Yayorozu smiles compassionately at Kendo and invites her to join them for lunch sometime. The redhead nods, once again surprised, and leaves them to eat an egotistical blonde free piece. The rest of lunch is spent with easy companionship and teasing. Every so often, at least one person is glancing at Izuku, whether in admiration or amusement, as he continues talking animatedly with Tokiyami and Saro from down the table. Lunch is a little more raucous and a little more chaotic, but Itoshi finds himself smiling into his drink. He finds his earlier worries about Izuku's new attitude disappearing. Yes, Izuku is causing mayhem with words alone. Yes, he will probably regret some of the things he said come tomorrow, but that's just because he is generally a kind person who usually has a filter. But the more he watches Izuku interact with their classmates, the more he realizes that, yeah, this is actually Izuku. He is known Izuku is a sassy little shit when sleep-deprived, but he's still kind, still passionate and smart and enthusiastic. More willing to stand up for himself, which can only count as a good thing. Hitoshi is used to having to carefully skirt the line between intimidating bullies and not causing trouble. Izuku carries himself like he'd barely tried the first option, which surprises him since the boy is a bundle of gremlin energy wrapped in All Might merch. So yeah, he knows how much anxiety can restrict you. To think Izuku carried this much? Hitoshi's feeling better about his actions. Besides, life at UA is already so goddamn weird. Something like this might as well happen. 
It's important for Hero students to expect the unexpected, or some other fortune cookie bullshit Isava likes to spring on him. Maybe it'd be a reality check for certain people. The rest of the day is comparatively calm until their double period of foundational heroics. All Might comes into the classroom with his trademark grin followed by a racking cough. Hitoshi is honestly concerned for the guy. He respects the hell out of the former number one hero, but can admit he felt resentful at the perfect limelight hero image. Getting to actually know the sweet, kind of dumb man as Yagi-sensei has taken some work and more pity than one would expect. He knows All Might gave up his life, time, and health to protect others, and this is what he's been left with. Hitoshi will admit on his more introspective nights that he's not sure he would have lasted as long as the hero does with his injuries. So he's come to act the same towards All Might as Aizawa does. Exasperation, at the dramatics, but secret concern and checking on his well-being. Izuku told him before that most of the class carries a handkerchief for their teacher and that the faculty all mandate breaks for the hero to rest between classes. Hitoshi just packs a paw print covered hanky and reserves most of his sarcasm for his other teachers. Not to say that he doesn't roll his eyes just a bit when All Might still reads off of their technical lesson plan on coordinating search and rescue from flashcards. He is only human, after all. The second half of their heroics class is a training exercise, so they pile out of the classroom to change into their costumes. The class loiters around the entrance to Ground Alpha, the closest fake city to the school. All Might is yet to arrive from the control room where he was setting up whatever activity he had for them. Ida was leading the teens in stretching, most following along with the loud instructions. More than a few people keep looking at Izuku, incredibly flexible for someone with his muscles. Hey Momo, can you help me? I've had this knot on my shoulder and none of these stretches are helping. Ashido asks with a frown when Ida is finished. Yayorozu was a surprising contender as a future chiropractor. She had walked on many a classmate's back to pop their spine and often recommend certain acupuncture procedures alongside specialty teas for Hitoshi's sleepless nights. Hitoshi had accepted the tea, but not the needles. He trusts Yayorozu, but he and sharp, stabby things don't mix. Mineta salivating immediately at the conversation. His demented chuckling gets everyone's attention. The girls' his shoulders hunch. Ashido scowls and turns to her friend. Maybe we can head back to the locker room. Yayorozu gestures for Ashido to escape the great pervert, but Mineta loudly whines. Aw, oh, come on, why can't you give us a show? Mineta rubs his hands together and leers. Uraraka steps towards the two girls, Asui following and glaring at the creep. A shadow falls over the boy from behind. I think I speak for everyone here when I say stop being gross, you raggedy bitch. Izuku looms over the tiny boy with his arms crossed and a serious expression. What the hell? It's not gross to want to see two hot babes rub each other, Mineta protests. Come on, what are you, some kind of homo? Jiro and Ashido both squawk in offense. Shoji, Asui, and Yagirozu wince. Hitoshi hears Uraraka's knuckles crack and a snap of forming eyes from Todoroki. Ida spluttering in outrage while the rest of the class wears dark, angry expressions. Even Bakugo is glaring at the pervert, who has turned to face the class with an oblivious, What? Izuku's face doesn't change. He simply stills, bowing his head so his fluffy bangs block his eyes. Hitoshi is seconds away from angrily crushing Mineta's self-esteem before green lightning arcs around Izuku. He rears a single leg back before kicking Mineta in the reinforced metal diaper. The impact sends swirling gusts of wind around the ground. The entire class watches a screaming Mineta disappear into the sky. Uraraka whistles and slow claps. I'm getting better at distance, Izuku mumbles to himself, hand to his forehead to block out the sun, as the purple dot fades past the boundaries of the training ground. He remains completely calm. Should we... check on him? Kirishima asks less than half-heartedly. Tokiyami shakes his head. He shall be fine. Waste of time, Dark Shadow chimes in. If Hitoshi didn't know any better, he'd say Kirishima's nod was relieved. Several minutes later, All Might joins the suddenly carefree group of teenagers. Ashido is rotating her shoulder, pain-free, while the rest of the girls circle around Izuku, laughing and smiling. In fact, the crowd has circled around the bright boy even tighter than in the classroom. Everyone except Bakugo is talking and happy when their teacher clears his throat. We will be working on your rescue techniques under attack. Your experience at the provisional license exam may have given you a glimpse of protecting civilians during battle, but a hero must fine-tune their multitasking. You'll be split into groups to rescue dummies in different parts of the city, but you will also be under attack from other teams. The team with the most rescues will be the victor. All Might grins at their responding enthusiasm. This shall test your teamwork, strategy, and rescue training. I highly recommend you decide who will be rescuers and who will be battlers. I have divided up the five teams. 
With your numbers, one team will have five people instead of four. You don't need to worry about that, Sensei, Uraraka interrupts gleefully. The teacher pauses, somewhat flustered. He scans the group of teenagers. Izuka smirks, chin to his chest. We're short someone, hmm? Ahem, Ida answers, pushing his glasses up his face and pointedly not looking at his teacher like the bad liar he is. Mineta has gone to recovery, girl. He is not feeling well. Oh, I see. Very good, young Ida. Thank you. All right, we'll have five groups of four. As for your teams, here. Whatever deities exist that are watching him must bless him because he is on Izuka's team with Sato and Koda. Todoroki and Bakugo are on separate teams. Kirishima has his own. Hitoshi isn't a betting man, and of course he wants to win the exercise, but with Yagyarozu and Uraraka on the last team, he can't help but want to put his money on them. Izuku bounds over to Hitoshi and Sato while Koda walks up, but All Might calls Izuku over to him. Young Midoriya, could I speak with you for a second? Izuku waves the others to go first. Hitoshi hesitates when he sees All Might looking concerned. He decides to stay close in case his friend is in trouble, so he steps away to hover near the entrance to the city. He's technically out of sight, but able to hear when All Might asks Izuku about some things he's heard from the other teachers and how the teen's been affected by a quirk. I'm okay, All Might, I promise, Izuku says. It's nothing serious. I'm glad to hear it, my boy. I was concerned to hear you were acting differently. It's not that different, I don't think. I can't really tell. Izuku laughs a little sheepishly. Hitoshi can almost imagine him rubbing the back of his neck. It seemed that even with his confidence boost and missing anxiety, he still has some of his nervous habits. Hitoshi's about to turn away when he feels another presence close to him. Looking over his shoulder, he sees Todoroki also hiding behind the wall and staring at him. What are you doing here? He mouths silently. Todoroki just shrugs. Will you be up to this exercise, young Midoriya? Of course. I have to make you proud, after all. All Might coughs. My boy, you always make me proud. Both Hitoshi and Todoroki glance at each other. Maybe he should step away from what is obviously becoming more sentimental than expected. He is about to nod his head to get Todoroki to leave with him when Izuku hums happily. Thanks, Dad. Hitoshi wheezes while Todoroki blue screens. All Might splutters. D Dad? Well, I mean, you're not the best teacher, if I'm completely honest, and I feel like you could use some help with actually working with kids, but you're still my favorite mentor and father figure. I've seen you that way for a while. Hitoshi whips his head around to peer past the concrete wall and sees Izuku grab All Might for a hug, pressing his face into the man's bony chest. All Might is obviously overwhelmed, tears gathering in the corner of his eyes and belatedly hugging back. He murmurs something to Izuku, too low for Hitoshi to hear, but he notices how Izuku squeezes tighter. I knew it, Todoroki hisses behind him. Hitoshi turns back to shush him. I knew it, he repeats louder. Why the hell is there a manic look in his eyes? Did you hear something? All Might asks Izuku, who tilts his head. As Izuku disengages from his mentor and turns in their direction, Hitoshi scowls and slaps a hand over Todoroki's mouth, dragging him away from their hiding spot. Pulling Todoroki all the way to the designated start was a credit to Aizawa's upper strength training regimen. Hitoshi spares a mental second to mock his previous noodle arm self, then another to mock Todoroki for his zoned out look even after Hitoshi releases him. What was that? He can't help but ask. First rule of eavesdropping is to not yell and give away your position. I was right, Todoroki says. Midoriya is All Might's secret love child. Hitoshi just... He just can't, right now. How he hasn't heard that particular theory from his deskmate was a mystery in itself. For someone who was obviously into all things Izuku, one would think he'd share the wildest theory he had about the boy. Hitoshi stares at Todoroki who looks completely pleased with himself. How many people had he told this to? Did Izuku know? Hitoshi hates to admit it. We'll never say it out loud, but he can actually see it. The smile, the names of his ultimate moves, how close the two seem, especially after that interaction. Stop, no, he's not going down this rabbit hole. Okay, he drawls, shaking his head. Life motto, must remember his life motto. Good job, it's time to do the exercise, though. Go find your team. Hitoshi pushes Todoroki to walk away towards his own team's starting point in the city. Hitoshi pinches the bridge of his nose for a solid 30 seconds before Izuku appears and walks towards him. He lights up when he sees Hitoshi and beckons him to follow to their team. Sato and Koda patiently wait for the duo to arrive and immediately all three turn to Izuku who's already grinning. I have a plan. Kodakun and Sato-kun will be one team, mainly focusing on rescue since Kodakun can locate the civilians and Sato-kun can handle any debris. 
Both of you are strong, so I trust you'll be able to handle a fight, but you'll be focused mostly on defense. Shinsokun and I will also scout to fight against the other teams. Most will be focused on rescue operations or expect the entire team to move together, but this way we can divide and conquer. Between us, we have a great balance to handle any issues. Koda blushes at the compliment, while Sato grins brightly. They agree with the plan easily enough, and Koda conscripts a few birds to investigate the city. They decide to work through an entire section, spreading out as they need. When the signal bell starts, they split into their pairs to head into two directions. Sato and Koda check in on their comms each time they find a dummy civilian. Izuku and Hitoshi both save a dummy each, but they cause much more chaos beyond the exercise's goal. Hitoshi yanks Hagakure and his capture weapon, Izuku wrapping the issued capture tape around her wrists. They tag team against Kaminari by psyching out the blonde with Izuku's stealthy quick attacks, and Hitoshi jumping in with his voice modifier. Ojiro is sent flying by his tail with one of Izuku's air blasts. Kirishima's trying to catch him only to end up also blasted away. More than one building may be destroyed. Hitoshi can't stop grinning. The glee on Izuku's face fits well alongside his usual determination. It feels nice to work together. To win. They make it through half the city just by attacking the other teams, but as they run into a deserted area, they're ambushed. Hitoshi and Izuku bolt out of the way of an exploding wall. In the smoke... Bakugo stands with a scowl and flickering palms. You're going down, shitty Deku. You've been acting up all day. Oh, hi, Kachan. Here to kill us. Hitoshi chokes on his laughter. Izuku is blasé about repeating one of Bakugo's standard catchphrases, even raising an eyebrow expectantly. Bakugo aims a large explosion at them. Both boys separate, Hitoshi backing farther away from the consequential fire. He glances around for Bakugo's teammate, but the blonde is alone. How typical. Izuku bites his lip, finger to his chin. He looks Bakugo up and down. You're getting better, but you're nowhere near where you need to be in order to be the number one hero, or a decent person. I strongly recommend anger management sessions. Bakugo runs forward to kick at the space Izuku used to be. His explosion spins him into a howitzer impact, following after Izuku who bounces on a building's wall. Izuku takes a chunk of concrete from the ground and hurls it like a discus at his classmate, who explodes it into pieces and screams. You think you're so tough? You get hit with a quirk and now you think you're better than me, huh? Hitoshi sighs. Are you done? Bakugo wisely doesn't answer, just glares. He's about to try using his quirk again, mimicking Izuku's voice when the boy himself snorts. Yes, actually. What? I do think I'm stronger than you, Izuku says and flicks a super-powered finger at Bakugo, powerful wind making him skid backward. You? Bakugo doesn't even finish his sentence before ricocheting forward with two large explosions. Hitoshi leaps backward. Capture weapon at the ready, but Izuku simply lunges to meet the blonde in the middle, immediately in Bakugo's personal space and kicking upwards. Shinzo-kun, go scout the area and back up Koda, Izuku commands. Bakugo barely manages to avoid his punch. I can handle this. He radios in for his team, only for Sato to confirm they've gotten most of the dummies in their sector. Hitoshi decides to drag himself up to one of the nearby roofs to get out of the blast radius, but he can't help himself from watching under the pretense of providing backup. He notices Sero and Todoroki in a building several meters away, shoring up walls with ice and tape while Jiro carries out a dummy. All three of them glance over at the smoke wafting from his direction. You're not stronger than me, Deku. You're just a useless weakling, Bakugo pants, bruised and bleeding. Izuku leisurely stands across from him, hand on hip, which only enrages the other boy more. Kachan, do you remember how upset you were during the sports festival because Todoroki-kun wouldn't use his fire against you? What about it? Bakugo snarls, pushing himself forward. Izuku dances around each attempt to grab him. Remember the temper tantrum you threw at ground beta instead of getting therapy? Another wind blast from his fingers and Bakugo crashes into a street lamp. Oh, sorry. I mean, remember our previous fight? Hitoshi raises an eyebrow as he stays low. He sees Todoroki's team walking closer and informs his own teammates over the comms. Sato confirms, while Izuku just sighs and clicks his tongue at his old childhood friend. I was only using 8% of my power. Bakugo freezes. Izuku rests both of his arms behind his head, staring thoughtfully. Here I'm using about six. You damn bastard! Bakugo screams. His face turns bright red beneath the dust coating it. He flexes his fingers before flying into the air and barreling down like a demented missile. His exploding punch misses Izuku as the boy darts upwards, right behind Bakugo, and suplexes him into the ground. Izuku glares as Bakugo continues to yell curses and grabs the taller teen's collar to drag him upright. 
You know, Kachan, it would be an absolute shame if All Might ever found out exactly the kinds of things you said to his favorite student and successor, the exact words that came out of your mouth every day. Tell me, do you think he'd be pleased with you? Izuku brings Bakugo's face even closer. Do you think he'd call that plus ultra behavior? Bakugo swings another exploding fist. Izuku maneuvers his feet to spin both of them and then yeets Bakugo across the training field. The boy tries to course correct with a blast but tumbles through the dirt. Izuku stalks forward. Hitoshi can't stop gaping as the other boy dodges Bakugo's next attack with ease and kicks out at his midsection. Bakugo retches before Izuku slams him to the ground back first. All you do is scream. Do you not get tired? Do you not just want to have a peaceful day and not go apeshit over the smallest things? I'd like some peace, and it's only because we used to be friends and because I do care about you that I haven't forcibly gotten it. Fuck you, Deku, Bakugo rasps. He is scrambling his hands into the dirt to gain leverage, but Izuku's knee on his chest prevents him from moving. He lets off an explosion, but Izuku simply diverts his wrist and harshly pins it into the dirt. So, Kachan, I'll say this once. Do better. And you know what? There are more ways to get what you want than through violence. I don't want to kill you or anything if I use more than 8%. So how about this? If you don't start acting right, I'm telling Uncle Masaru about what you told me to do in middle school. Bakugo completely stills under Izuku's poisonous green eyes. Well, he asks, smiling politely and gripping Bakugo's wrist tighter until the blonde boy looks away. Hitoshi takes everything back. That was the sexiest thing he's ever seen. Judging by the rising steam coming off of Todoroki, who arrived just in time to see the end of the fight, he agrees. Bakugo opens and closes his mouth for several seconds. Hitoshi isn't close enough to see his facial expression, but the boy's shoulders are tenser than steel. Izuku huffs and lets go of the blonde, almost carefree in his posture. He lifts a hand to his earpiece, but All Might's voice rings out across the entire city. All the citizens have been rescued. Students, please return to the entrance. Izuku grins and ignores Bakugo as he walks toward the assembled Saro, Todoroki, and Jiro. Hitoshi scales down the building and joins the group. Saro and Jiro glance back at Bakugo, who is carefully pulling himself from the crater on the ground. Need a hand? Saro asks his friend. Fuck off, soy sauce, Bakugo says woodenly. The other students gather at the entrance, some with scrapes and some still pulling the capture tape off of them. Bakugo was one of the last to arrive, limping. Izuku showers Kota and Sato in compliments when he sees them, ecstatic about their good work. Their team nets second place, but had outstanding teamwork, according to their teacher. Hitoshi was right to mentally bet on Yayorozu's team. She, Uraraka, Shoji, and Aoyama decimated the competition. They move towards the locker rooms after All Might offers them constructive criticism. The teacher sends Bakugo to Recovery Girl for his injuries. His friends are shocked when the blonde only looks down and trudges off silently. Izuku drags Hitoshi forward with their team, also complimenting him on his ambush techniques and the repelling that he did out of the building with the civilian dummy. Todoroki follows behind them and catches the blush on Hitoshi's face at Izuku's enthusiastic praise. Hitoshi stops when he feels a cold hand on his wrist. He startles and turns to see Todoroki, who quickly retracts his hand. Shinso, Todoroki says. The rest of the class continues forward, disappearing into the locker room. The two boys stare at each other awkwardly in the now empty hallway. Yes, when it becomes clear Todoroki's just going to stand there. The boy squints and looks at Hitoshi from head to toe. Take a picture, it'll last longer, he grumbles to himself. Are we love rivals? What? Excuse me? He says, not at all high-pitched. You like Midoriya, so we must be love rivals. Curse Todoroki for being this straightforward. It was often hilarious and even more refreshing. On rare occasions it could be called cute, but this kind of blunt statement wasn't reassuring when he was on the receiving end. For a brief moment, Hitoshi wants to go with his gut and just deny. There's no way he likes his friend, right? A cute boy who might have a little sex appeal and laughs at his dark humor in the middle of the night. One of his first true friends who decided to stick by him and actually help instead of just wishing him well. Someone he feels he could confide in about anything. Someone he'd break the carefully constructed lines around his quirk for in order for them to have one day away from their bad thoughts. Shit. Hitoshi knew himself and knew he wasn't emotionally mature enough for a relationship. He had fucking trauma, okay? No doubt Izuka did too, and doubly so for whatever was going on with Todoroki. So it would be easier to just deny Todoroki's accusations. Yet the thought of saying, No, I don't like Izuku, made his chest tight. Seeing Izuku cozied up to someone, loving someone, while he could only watch? What the hell was he supposed to feel about that? He won't deny he's fonder of Izuku than he is of other people. 
but to be someone's rival? Someone who would no doubt encase him in an iceberg if he tried to make a move? The insomniac already wants to sign defeat. That sounds like too much work, he mutters. His fingers brush through his gravity-defying hair, resisting the urge to tug on it self-consciously. Todoroki frowns, speculative. What does that mean? Are we not love rivals? It's whatever, he tries. But you do like Midoriya. Hitoshi groans. I mean, obviously, I have eyes. Then again, after today, at least half the class was also now in the Izuku Appreciation Club. He tactfully doesn't say that. Todoroki frowns. Look, don't worry about it, okay? With that, he awkwardly shrugs and goes for the locker room, self-conscious and eager to get his gear off to end the day. Todoroki follows, and Itoshi can feel the boy's eyes on his back. I'll be watching carefully, Todoroki says quietly, as they're the last to leave the locker room. Izuka's walking ahead, surrounded by Asui and Tokiyami, engaging them in a heated discussion. Ashido keeps pestering him for a piggyback ride, grinning. What? You're just going to be there any time he and I are alone together. Hitoshi can't believe this. Did he just gain a stalker? When he wasn't even planning on making a move or confessing. If I have to. Hitoshi blinks into space. This class was so weird. Hell, his friends, and yes, Izuku wins. He'll admit they're his friends. Are also so weird. Just do what you want. Thank you. This is a very non-confrontational rivalry. Hurry up, you two. We're heading to the dorms for a movie marathon. Uraraka calls before Itoshi can facepalm. The two boys look at each other, one more resigned than the other, and hurry their pace to join the group. I'm ordering pizza, Yayorozu raises a hand, smiling. We can have a party! It's a school night, Ida reminds them, conversations devolving into arguments over whether it would be okay to stay up late. I have some things I'd like to discuss with you too, Midoriya, Todoroki says. More than one person jeers and teases the boy. I'd like your input on a project. Sure. You coming, Shinsokun? Izuku asks. The afternoon sun shines off of his hair. Another heart-stopping smile. Hitoshi squints and nods. A text alert jolts him from the entrancing sight. He pulls out his phone to see a message from Aizawa. I have two incident reports from Recovery Girl and about 40 texts from Midnight and All Might alone. I didn't want to know, but now I'm making this your problem. Spill everything or I swear to God. Hitoshi grimaces at the message before looking up. He follows after Todoroki and Izuku, the latter gesturing wildly and beaming. He starts typing as he follows them to the dorms. Izuku wakes up slowly, reaching over to grab a piece of paper stuck to his cheek. He opens his eyes and immediately regrets everything and aborts mission. His head feels like it was destroyed, smashed, and weak early morning sunlight pouring in through his curtains must have a personal vendetta against him. He takes a deep breath and tries to open his eyes again, with more success. He's in his bed surrounded by dozens of loose papers and a few pens. He shifts and, oh, okay, that's a person. He squints over his shoulder to see Shoto, asleep with his mouth open and drooling. Trying to turn back around, he notices Itoshi also on the bed, but sitting against the wall, one hand resting on Izuka's ankle while the taller boy snores. He squints at the paper that was stuck to his face. It's covered with three sets of handwriting, outlining an attack plan. Oh, it's outlining alibis and an ambush plan for Endeavor. Hmm, okay. Unexpected, but something he can work with. Then the hazy confusion from sleep clears, and reality crashes into him like a semi-truck. And so do his memories of the previous day. Oh God, the things he said. The things he did. He picked a fight with so many people. He always thought about snapping back at Kachan since, well, before middle school. He's always wanted to smack Mineta in the face when he got too gross to handle. He's always wanted to make someone sit down, shut up, and listen to him for goddamn once, but he'd never thought he'd do it, especially like that. He grabs his pillow to muffle his groan, or suffocate himself, whichever happens. Secondhand embarrassment has always been a problem for him. Firsthand, up close, embarrassment? Just take him out back and put him out of his misery. He tries to ignore the panic building in his chest. He'd sassed his teachers. He'll have to leave school. Damn, Izuku really likes school, though. His not-that-internal freakout must wake Hitoshi and Shoto, probably the panicked wiggling. Shoto humps sleepily in a not-at-all cute way, while Hitoshi cracks his neck and stretches. Not as cute, but hello, collarbones. Oh, look, now he's perving after his closest friends. Fantastic. He has noticed they're attractive. All of his friends are. Curse his bisexual little heart. But now was not the time. Now was escape plan time. Izuku, Shoto asks quietly. 
Who's Izuku? There's no Izuku here, he squeaks. Hitoshi chuckles, then yawns obnoxiously. What? Are you changing your name and going into hiding? Izuku drags the pillow from his face to pout at the lavender-haired teen. His plan was that see-through, huh? Stop freaking out. Easier said than done, he wheezes. Shoto frowns and rests a cool hand on Izuku's forehead. Whoa, okay, deep breaths, Hitoshi says. He squeezes Izuku's ankle without realizing it. The grounding sensation helps him focus enough to even his breathing. He stares at the ceiling for a moment. Want me to brainwash you again? Hitoshi jokingly offers. Both Izuku and Shoto freeze and turn to him in unison. Wait, no, I'm not actually going to do that. It would be easier, Izuku admits. He liked feeling confident. He liked silencing all the negative thoughts in his head. He liked being Izuku, not worthless Deku. Shoto frowns while looking at his own hands. If what happened yesterday was truly him, wouldn't it be fine to brainwash him again? Hitoshi groans. It's a short-term solution. Based on his reaction yesterday, the quirk is literally altering his brain chemicals, and the only suggestions or commands I've done on people alter their conscious minds, not their literal neurons. That's not healthy for me to do. I'm not a doctor, and I'm not as reliable as medication. If he isn't consistently brainwashed, then he'd have a huge fallout with the consequences of the suppression wearing off suddenly. I'm not risking it. You know a lot about this kind of stuff, Shoto says curiously. Having a quirk like mine means I got really into learning about brains and stuff. That makes sense. Thanks, I live for your approval, Hitoshi drawls. Izuku sits up and fidgets with a loose thread on his pillowcase. Is it really so bad? He mumbles. I trust you. Hitoshi curses under his breath. He looks away, hiding his suddenly pink cheeks, not that Izuku can't see them. Shoto grumbles unintelligently. Is he glaring at Hitoshi? That's weird. Izuku could have sworn they were becoming friends, especially with how close they seemed yesterday. He is pointedly blocking the memory of the breathy marry me from yesterday's lunch, the grin on Hitoshi's face as they ran through the training city, the soft laughter between all three of them as they ran through hypothetical murder endeavor scenarios. Friends, 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 friends. Your mental health is more important, Hitoshi states with a note of finality. Izuku huffs. Fine. I'm still going to run off to live in the mountains. You both are welcome to visit me. I'd be coming with you, Shoto says, matter of fact. Izuku does not squeak and blush. You're not in trouble or anything, Midoriya. Easy for you to say. I punted Mineta. And it was great, Hitoshi insists. Shoto nods enthusiastically. Yeah, okay, it was kind of great, but he still assaulted another student. He'd have to deal with Kachan, too, and that just... He wasn't sure he had enough mental energy to handle that fallout. Kachan is going to murder me today, Izuku moans and falls back to his pillow. He can try, but I doubt he'd succeed. Shoto tries to reassure him. Considering you wrecked his entire shit, he should stay out of your way for at least a few days. I don't want him to hate me, he mumbles. Did Kachan deserve a smackdown? Yes. Did he want to ruin any chance of working together in the future? No. He tried so hard already, even when Kachan wouldn't do anything in return. Yeah, well, we'll deal with it, okay? You don't have to do anything alone. Hitoshi rubs the back of his neck. Shoto nods, smiling softly. Izuku can't stop the emotional tears that gather in his eyes. He pushes them down, not eager to start his day off crying. These two are really the best. Okay, that sounds good. Hey, don't you both have to get ready for class? He redirects and gives them a wobbly smile. They both glance at each other and reluctantly nod. Hitoshi pats his shoulder and Shota grabs his hand to give a quick squeeze. Blushing, Izuku waves them from his door as they both head to the elevator. When they're out of sight, Izuku breathes out and rubs his hand. His shoulder feels tingly. He shakes himself and sits back on his bed. His phone is lit up with notifications, so he takes a moment to check his messages. Good morning, Deku. How are you feeling? Midoriya-kun, I would like to invite you to join me on a morning run today. I feel as though I should apologize for not seeing... How much your struggles have been affecting your mental state, and I wish to check in with you. Please know you can always rely on me if you need anything. As a hero student, and more importantly, your friend. One out of five messages. Hey, Ten Million. Your friend said you recommended me to them for their gear. Nothing but the best from Hatsume Company. Thanks. Make sure to come by the lab for your new babies, too. Should be done by this afternoon. Izuka smiles at his friends. He stretches and gathers clothes for the day. He might be able to meet with Tenya if he hurries, but... Then he continues to read his remaining messages as he walks around the room. Problem child. 
Come to Nezu's office before school starts. You're not in trouble, but we have some things to discuss about yesterday. Hello, Midoriya-kun. When you come by my office, please be sure to bring your delightful notebooks. I would be greatly interested in discussing your analysis in more depth. Also, don't listen to a word the rat says. If you respect me as a teacher at all, you won't turn to the dark side. My boy, make sure you are well rested. If you need anything, let me know. I wish to have lunch with you today if you're available. And make sure you stop by Recovery Girl during the day. We're getting you anti-anxiety medication. Izuku short circuits at the last text. He doesn't have the emotional capacity to freak out about meeting Principal Nezu just yet. The principal wanted his notebooks? Did he like something about Izuku's hobby? How did he find out? Okay, maybe he was starting to freak out. Aizawa-sensei seemed so exasperated yesterday. He took one look at Izuku's personality and noped so hard he was almost catatonic. He had no doubt based on the text that his teacher understood what exactly happened to him. Did Toshi tell his mentor about his anxiety? And here he was, offering Izuku help even if it would negatively affect his sanity. Izuku sniffs and clutches the phone. He is blessed to have great teachers for once in his life. He sends a text to Tenya confirming that he can do a short run but that he's needed in school early. He confirms with all his friends and mentors that he's alive and well as he stumbles around the room to get ready. He's looking forward to going to class, maybe more anxious than usual, maybe not. Maybe Mineta would act worse, maybe Kacha would act better. Like Shoto and Hitoshi promised. They'd figure it out. He pulls on his sneakers and runs out the door, humming the song Ashido played last night in the dorms. What's happening, bitch? I'm a savage. All right, listeners, this concludes the one shot. I gave the voices in my head a megaphone. Personally, I'm a huge fan of this fic. It's got a lot of things I really like about it. It's crack treated seriously, which I already love and adore. And it's also great. It's got you know, the hinting of Toto Shindeku throughout it. I mean, obviously it's not an established relationship, but there's a lot in it that I really like and enjoy. I just think that it's so well done, so well written. It's got a great amount of humor into it. Uh, Izuku just, you know, losing that anxiety and just being true to himself to an extent for an entire day like that. I just think it was such a cool concept. So I'm eager to hear your overall thoughts and reactions to the entirety of this fic as well. And as always, thank you all so much for listening.